Hey guys, Thomas Joseph here, and today we are tackling the cinnamon roll. Now we have received a ton of requests about how to get the perfect cinnamon roll, something that's not gummy and undercooked, or even too crusty and hard on the outside. And today we're gonna share with you a foolproof recipe that uses a secret ingredient. I don't know if you'll be able to guess, but let me show you how. So to start the cinnamon rolls, we're gonna use two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast. This isn't rapid uh, rise yeast, guys, so make sure that you're picking up the right packet at the grocery store. And this is from one single packet of yeast. And I'm going to add this to one cup of whole milk that I've heated to about 110 degrees. You want anywhere between 100 degrees to 110, a nice temperature that will encourage the yeast to develop. And this mixture will become foamy and you'll know that the yeast is alive and it's going to give a wonderful rise to your cinnamon rolls because that's what we want. We want something that's nice and lofty. So this is gonna sit for about five minutes. And while that sits, I'm going to add six tablespoons of unsalted butter that is melted and cooled slightly to the bowl of a stand mixer. Whenever we're baking in the test kitchens, we always like to use unsalted butter so that we can control the amount of salt that we add into a recipe. To this, I'm also going to add the secret ingredient. Now, this is potato. So what we've done here is we've taken an eight ounce potato. You can use a russet potato. You're going to peel it, cut it into cubes, and boil it until it's fork tender. And then I have put it through a ricer, so I have a nice fine texture. And you might be saying, whoa, potato in my cinnamon rolls? That seems kind of weird. But this ingredient is kind of key. One thing, potatoes, if you didn't know, are high in potassium. <laughs> and potassium helps yeast rise at a faster rate. So we're gonna get nice loftiness to our cinnamon rolls. In addition to that, potatoes and potato starch in general have the ability to hang on to moisture more than wheat starches. So we're also gonna be using a little bit of flour in here, but the potatoes are key in keeping moisture in your cinnamon rolls so that they stay a nice fluffy texture longer. Another thing that it adds to that light, fluffy texture is the starch that grabs onto all that moisture really inhibits the protein in the flour, which is gluten, from creating big strands that might make your dough tough. So this really does help in improving the texture overall. So if you've never tried adding potato into your cinnamon buns or into a lot of other bread doughs, I would encourage you to try it. It's a really great kind of secret. In addition to this, I'm gonna add two thirds of a cup of granulated sugar. And since we are making cinnamon rolls, you do need a decent amount of sugar to help kind of sweeten up the dough. I'm gonna add one large egg, and this is a room temperature egg, right into the stand mixer, and three and a half cups of bread flour. Now bread flour is going to add a nice bit of strength and structure to our cinnamon rolls, so they're gonna keep a nice shape, and all of that wonderful rise and air that gets developed throughout the proofing process with the yeast is going to be captured in the structure that's provided by the gluten that's in the bread dough. So I'm just gonna mix this together. I'm gonna add our yeast mixture, which you can see is nice and foamy. You can see it's creating all these bubbles and that's how you know that it's activated and it's going to help our dough rise nicely. So mix this together and then add one and a half teaspoons of coarse salt. Sprinkle it in, mix this up, and then attach this bowl to your stand mixer. And this is gonna beat on the stand mixer using the dough hook attachment for about 15 minutes until it forms a nice elastic dough. And you'll see that the dough will start to build up around the dough hook itself. And that's when you know that it's ready. All right, guys, our dough has been on the stand mixer for about 15 minutes, and you can see it's collected up on the dough hook, and the dough is nice and shiny and elastic, and this is when you know it's done and ready for shaping and proofing. So now I'm just gonna use one of my favorite tools, that is the bench scraper, and I'm going to remove the dough hook and just put the dough out onto a lightly floured surface. And you don't really need to knead this dough very much because that's what's been happening in the mixer. I just wanna bring it together in a nice shape. Now, 
Having one of these stand mixers at home is really essential in bread making. And what it does is it does the work for you. It really helps to kind of force all of the wonderful liquid ingredients, the water, into the flour, saturating the gluten, saturating the potato starch molecules, which is what we use in our dough today. And that, in the end, is gonna create a wonderful, fluffy, light and airy cinnamon bun that's going to have a really nice shape and structure to it. You can see how beautiful this dough is. It's nice and soft and supple. And I'm just bringing it together into a ball using my hands. You can see that I just take my hands and I use the sides and I kind of push the dough into the center on the bottom of the ball. And this creates a nice round shape. And this is gonna go into a buttered bowl and I'm gonna cover it with plastic wrap. And this is going to proof in a nice warm place until it's doubled in bulk. And that can take anywhere between an hour to an hour and a half. But really you guys, those time ranges that I'm giving you are dependent on the temperature at which your kitchen is. So something that's a little bit warmer, the dough will proof faster. If it's cooler, it will take much longer time for the dough to proof. So really what you're looking for is this dough to be at least doubled in size. And I've done one a little bit earlier. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. All right, guys, look at this. This is the dough that we've made earlier. You can see it's built up in size. It's almost, I would say, two and a half times the size of the dough that we started with originally. Now, at this point, I'm going to turn the dough out onto the same work surface here, floured. And you're going to roll this dough into a rectangle, about 14 by 18 inches in diameter. And it really shouldn't take much effort at all, guys, because this dough is so nice and soft. All right, so we are just about there, guys. Perfect. And one of the things that I like to do when I'm trying to roll out into a rectangle is actually taking the corners and pinching them down onto the board to really make sure that you're getting a nice squared off shape. And now it's the time for the filling. So this is probably the best part of the cinnamon roll, right? And I have six tablespoons of unsalted butter and you wanna make sure it's super, super soft at room temperature is best. And using an offset spatula, just smear the butter all around the dough, you wanna keep about a half inch border around the edge because when we do roll this up, all of the ingredients are kind of going to be squeezed out to the side. So leave a bit of a border so ultimately the filling doesn't work its way out of the cinnamon roll. And the purpose of the butter is really just to help the brown sugar cinnamon mixture, which we're gonna put on top, adhere to the dough. This is 2 thirds of a cup of light brown sugar. I'm gonna add a pinch of coarse salt and two teaspoons of ground cinnamon. Just make sure this is nicely combined and then sprinkle this evenly over the butter. So once you get it sprinkled around, you can take your hand and just spread it out nice and evenly. Again, making sure that you maintain that border. And the reason why I rolled the dough in just one direction is because I wanted to keep the long end, the 18 inch end, closer to me because that's how we're gonna roll this up. So starting with this long end, you're going to fold it up and you're just gonna roll the dough. Now you don't have to do this too, too tightly. You can pull the sides of the dough out if you're seeing that your dough is kind of shrinking in on the corners. And now with the seam side down, you can push this in if it's kind of graduated beyond the 18 inches. Push the dough together so it's a nice even shape. Don't be afraid to do that. And now I'm gonna cut this into 12 portions. Now if the dough is really soft, if your kitchen's really hot, you can take this at this point in time. You can even transfer it right on the cutting board if you have a refrigerator that will fit your cutting board into the refrigerator for about 30 minutes until it's a little bit more firm so it's easier to cut in portion. I have a classic nine by 13 inch baking dish here that I buttered generously so that the cinnamon buns do not stick. So have that off to the side. And now we're going to cut this log into 12 equal pieces. And the way I like to do that is to start in the middle. So if this is 18 inches, that means that I'm going to cut right at nine. 
You can flour your knife if you need to to get a really nice even piece. And then each of these halves we're gonna cut into six pieces. So in half again, and then into thirds. And this method of kind of cutting your cinnamon buns or any type of dough that you need to portion out starting in the middle and continuing on in that sort of way will help to ensure that you get nice even pieces. And brilliant. So now into the pan, cut side up. And so you want four rows of three. And you can give a little space in between for the dough to expand. So I'm gonna cover this with plastic wrap and this is gonna go into the refrigerator for a nice long proof for about eight hours and that's up to overnight. So this is actually a really great recipe if you're entertaining, if you're doing a brunch, where you can make this in advance the night before and pull it out in the morning and they'll be ready to bake. So into the refrigerator for eight hours. All right, everybody. So. The cinnamon buns, they've been out of the refrigerator for about an hour and a half, and we've set them in a warm place. So they've had a chance not only to rise overnight, but to come to room temperature and to proof a little bit more. And you can see how light and pillowy they are here. And now I'm going to place them in a 350 degree oven for about 30 to 35 minutes. Now, one important thing that I wanna talk about is temping using a thermometer to gauge whether or not your cinnamon rolls are done. So an instant read thermometer inserted into the center of the baking dish should read 210 degrees Fahrenheit. Now for doughs, usually what we say for like bread doughs that aren't kind of enriched with fat and sugar and eggs, it's about 190, but with something that has a lot of decadence to it, like these cinnamon rolls, you want to go closer to that 210 degrees Fahrenheit. So into that oven, 30 to 35 minutes. All right, the cinnamon buns have been out of the oven for about 20 minutes. They're slightly cooled, but still a little bit warm. And now I'm gonna top them with my cream cheese glaze. Now this recipe you can find it on MarthaStewart.com. It's really simple. It's a little bit of cream cheese, confectioner sugar, milk, and a little bit of vanilla. It's slightly different than what we typically use on cinnamon rolls with the cream cheese addition, but it really does add a wonderful kind of decadence and nice tangy flavor that helps to kind of offset the sweetness of the cinnamon rolls. We'll just smear this glaze around. Look at how amazing this looks, you guys. Brilliant. So I can't wait, guys. So I'm gonna try and fish out this piece here. Now they're still a little bit hot, but I wanna show you the beautiful texture of these cinnamon buns. So look at that wonderful light and airy texture. You can just tell from pulling these apart and how feathery the dough is. They're actually really light too. Like when you pick them up, there's no weight to them and that's how you know that you're getting a really fantastic cinnamon bun. I would encourage you to try this recipe out. For all of you who have been asking, give it a go. Let us know how it's going for you using the hashtag Kitchen Conundrums. We love to see your pictures and your photos. And as always, if you have any baking conundrums, any other conundrums, send them our way and enjoy, guys. And as always, guys, click like and subscribe.